Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. That breaking news coming from the Detroit Police Department where an officer is accused of taking $15,000 in bribes. What the chief is saying in just a moment. But we start first at four with a look at the owner of the three dogs that mauled a nine-year-old girl to death. You just got your first look there at 33-year-old Pierre Cleveland. Now, throughout the arraignment, he barely lifted his head as he was charged with second-degree murder and involuntary manslaughter in the death of Emma Hernandez. Coco McAvoy was in the courtroom. She joins us live with the very latest. An emotional day for everyone, Coco. Yes, Karen, a very emotional day, and Pierre Cleveland's bond was just set at $2 million cash. And one of the factors that went into his high bond is the fact that his three pit bulls had gotten loose before in the past. Now, this all stems from an awful incident on Monday evening. Nine-year-old Emma Hernandez was riding her bike near her home on Detroit's southwest side when she was viciously attacked and ultimately killed by three pit bulls. Neighbors tried to save her, but it was too late. And Pierre Cleveland owns the dogs. His lawyer says the pit bulls are no longer with him and will eventually be put down. We caught up with the lawyer after the arraignment. $2 million, what are you thinking? No comment. Like I said, it was inappropriate to comment right now, but I do think that that's outrageous. Now, he did also say that Cleveland's family is praying for the family of the little girl. I did speak with the family off camera. They were afraid to go on camera because they say they are getting death threats after that incident. Now, there will be a public viewing tomorrow for Emma, and her funeral will be held on Saturday at noon. Now, coming up at 5 o'clock, we're going to break down some statistics we got from the Detroit Animal Control. That's at 5. Back to you. All right, we'll see you at 5. Thanks, Coco. Also breaking, first of four, a Detroit police officer is accused of taking bribes from a drug dealer. Investigators say 47-year-old Michael Mosley took $15,000 from a dealer, and in exchange, he agreed to not pursue drug charges against that suspect. Mosley is now facing federal bribery charges. Chief Craig just spoke about the indictment. The 19-year veteran currently assigned to the a major violator section, uh, but I had suspended him with pay approximately one month ago based on uh, these allegations. Each of the charges carry a 10-year prison sentence. Hear more from Chief Craig about a larger drug investigation into DPD coming up at 5. 59-year-old woman is killed after a series of explosions leveled half of her home and rocked a Southgate neighborhood. This happened about 9.30 this morning on Cunningham near Fort Street. The force of those blasts shattered windows of the home next door, and that homeowner says she's lucky her children and their friends were not hurt. If it had been a little bit later in the day, I mean, them or any one of the neighborhood kids that play in our yard and with them, it, they could have been the wrong place at the wrong time. No other injuries were reported. Right now, officials are still trying to figure out what caused that explosion. Investigators believe the woman's oxygen tanks may have played a role in the blast. Power is back on over in Woodhaven after about 7,000 people lost power this morning. That outage closed the 33rd District Court. It'll reopen tomorrow. DTE says the outage was caused by a downed wire in Woodhaven. Power was just restored at 3.30 to the last 1,500 people whose lights were off. Now at 4, Ford is responding to President Trump after he blasted automakers for not backing his efforts to roll back Obama-era fuel efficiency rules. In a series of tweets, the president called auto executives weak and foolish. This comes after Ford, Honda, BMW, and Volkswagen reached a voluntary agreement with California on fuel economy standards. In response to the president, Ford says it is proud to lead the way in taking the right actions for the environment, while at the same time protecting consumer affordability. And now for our first look at the forecast. You said it was going to be a little cooler today. You sure are right, Ben. Oh, what a switch, Karen. I mean, yesterday we were really worrying whether or not we were going to get to 90 with the humidity. The humidity's gone and temperature's not even close to 80 this afternoon. Well, technically we're close. Uh, Ann Arbor's at 79, but there are plenty of spots that are definitely cooler. Lapeer at 71. And these obviously are the afternoon, near the afternoon high temperatures. 
the big story may be the lows tonight, even though we're going to be down to 61 here at midnight. How many spots are going to end up in the 40s for overnight lows and how many days are we going to be looking at that? Answers are in your four zone forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Karen. First and four, we're on top of stories making headlines around the world this Thursday. This afternoon, the out outrage is growing over the thousands of fires raging in the Amazon rainforest. The Amazon is known as the lungs of the Earth because it produces 20% of the Earth's oxygen and is a key factor in combating climate change. There are more than 70,000 fires burning. That's up 80% from last year. Brazil's environmental minister says the fires were caused by dry weather, wind, and heat. But researchers say they were set by ranchers and loggers who wanted to clear the land. A piece of history is crumbling. Stunning new video of the Titanic showing just how much it has deteriorated in the past 14 years since it was last photographed. Now it's because of the salt water, strong currents, and bacteria that's eating away at the metal. Scientists say that bacteria is threatening to turn the ship's 50,000 tons of iron into powder. Some estimates say the Titanic could be gone by 2030. New images will help scientists determine if that time frame is correct and will help them preserve the wreck in virtual reality. You might notice some of your female co-workers have taken a long weekend with an away message that says, gone fishing this weekend. A huge group of breast cancer survivors are being thrust into the wild to get hooked on a unique kind of healing. Paula Tubman joins us live in Royal Oak to explain what the Michigan chapter of Casting for Recovery has in store. Oh, it looks like you're having fun, Paula. Hey, Karen. Yeah, I'm trying to get the knack of this, but this is really the magic. This is this is the thing that really gets these women out and is so therapeutic. And here at Orvis, you know this group very well, don't you? We do. We love these ladies. Um, like that? Okay. Yeah. Fly fishing is a great way to get them out enjoying Oops. nature and for survivors to take a break and enjoy themselves. Yeah, and you know what? And, and again, when you have this kind of therapy in that kind of setting, uh, it really does give you an opportunity to get hooked on healing. I'm really excited and really, really nervous because I have never, ever been uh, camping. Here's Michelle's idea of roughing it. No room service. Though you could say what she's been through since being diagnosed with breast cancer was rough enough. Lump had gotten so large that it came up on the top of my chest. So literally, even wearing these clothes, you would be able to see it. You may remember earlier this spring, we told you about an organization, Casting for Recovery. And the great thing about casting is it's also been found to be therapeutic for women who are actually recovering from breast cancer surgery. A nonprofit that gathers breast cancer patients and survivors together from all over the nation to enjoy a 100% free weekend of camaraderie and fly fishing. This weekend, the Michigan chapter is holding its retreat in the Marquette River near Ludington. And 14 lucky women whose names were pulled from a lottery are on their way. I, I can't believe I was I was part of the lottery. I just, I truly feel like I have won it. And you also get to meet other women who have gone through this and you're gonna be sitting in nature and you might even catch a fish. Exactly. If I catch a fish, I hope somebody else takes it off the hook. Sue FaceTimed us as she prepared to take off to cast off. I just love the idea of putting on waders, getting in the um, river, walking down the river, doing that motion. I, I, I love the concept. What's cool about this is that fly fishing and motion used to master it is perfect physical therapy for women still suffering from post-surgical pain. It helps range of motion and arm strength. I've got a scar going the length up under my arm. Uh, that gets painful every now and then. All those muscles and tissues work in, in sync with one another. So it sure couldn't hurt, and I'm thinking it may just help. Yeah, you know what, and, and the other thing is these women get a chance to talk, they've got some therapists there, they get to commiserate, also c kind of compare notes and help heal each other. And Karen, this is actually a lot of fun, and James here says, I'm a natural, yes, I've got yes, a indeed. fish catching cast, which makes it too bad that I am actually allergic to fish. <laughs> But this is still a lot of fun. <laughs> well, odds are you're probably not going to catch anything in that parking lot, Paula. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. But you look good. To that. You do look good. <laughs> Great story. We appreciate it. 
Well, vaping was originally believed to be a healthier alternative to smoking, but many teens are learning the hard way. That's not necessarily the case. New at four, a horrific personal story that will serve as a warning for kids and their parents. And an 11-year-old boy survives to tell his shark attack story. New at four, why this survival tale is becoming all too common this summer.